Hi there and welcome back. So one of the things that we get asked about a lot, especially in the current climate, is about uh, the hospitality trade, about hotels, pubs, clubs, um, or anything to do with hospitality, cafes, restaurants. Uh, one of the key things that we've seen uh, today that they're, that they're going to do is uh, try and uh, ease down or change the, the social distancing uh, measures uh, from two metres, hopefully from two metres to one metre. And we get asked a lot uh, because we finance so many of these uh, hotel and uh, restaurant and pub deals in the past. Uh, I, I got phoned, what's your opinion on the social distancing? We've had a lot of clients who come back um, and actually want to sell their pubs, restaurants, etc. because they just don't feel that the market's viable. And uh, we get a lot of inquiries from people wanting to buy pubs because uh, uh, pubs and restaurants, because they want to use these now as a uh, residential accommodation. So this is my take on it so far. Um, the social distancing um, that they're proposing two meters uh, and they want to reduce it to one meter. That's fine, sounds good. My issue with it is that one thing or the main factor that they haven't spoken about in regards to social dis distancing in pubs is the drink factor, the alcohol. Now, my <laughs> opinion on this is that if you're social distancing for two metres, what happens when the person's had two or three drinks? All of a sudden, I guarantee you that two metres is going to become, become one metre. And if it's one metre, it's going to be even closer. They're going to be on top of each other, especially after a few drinks. How do they control uh, the drinking aspect? Are they going to turn around and say, look, you can only have so many drinks because then you won't be in control or, or you, you'll be hard to control? Um, and they haven't tackled that issue. No one's, I haven't seen anybody in the press on any of the channels turn around and say well what happens if the person is getting drunk what are you going to do because he's not going to be able to social distance you're not going to be able to reason with him so how do you control that and also i think it'll probably work and and the social distancing will probably work in, in the bigger establishments the bigger pubs the, um, the bigger free houses whatever you want to call them um, and the small ones i can't see it working i, I honestly can't see it working if you think about it, one of the biggest problems that these places have is the restrooms, the toilets. Usually you can't swing a cat in these places and there is a, the reason for that is that they're trying to get as much, squeeze as much um, a selling space as possible in, into the bar area. And when you end up, they'll be lucky if there's room for one or two people in, in these toilets. How are they going to work it? Is it one in, one out? Is there going to someone put a chalk on the door to say or put a sign of yes, it's, it's vacant, it's not vacant? I mean, who's controlling that? Um, and I can't see it. And like I said, once the drink's in, um, the common sense is out. So w where does the, um, what happens then? Are they going to be standing right next to each other? I mean, I mean, how does that work? Uh, the, the other thing is, what I, I, can, I can see it working uh, in big pubs, right? They, they might be able to control it because not only have they got the floor area for it, but they've got the manpower, they've got the staffing, etc. They've, they've got the big budgets that, to, do, to make all the changes um, that needs to be done. The smaller places, no. I mean, already some of the smaller places, um, you're lucky if you can accommodate um, 10 people in them. Now, I'm not just talking about pubs, I'm talking about cafes and restaurants as well. Uh, I live in Glasgow in the West End. A lot of what people call a restaurant has maybe only got um, a two or three tables. In some cases, there's maybe space for 10 or 10 or 15 people to sit. How are they going to survive with social distancing? Even at one metre, it doesn't work. I mean, you take a 15-seater or a 15-cover or 20-cover restaurant and make it into five. I can't see that, that business surviving. I can understand that if you've got a 100, 150 seat restaurant already, 150 covers, yeah, you could probably reduce that down 60, 70 covers and you'll still be fine. Well, okay, you won't make the same amount of money, but you'll still survive. But you're not going to survive if you're you're down to uh, five or six covers, if not less. Um, so I don't really think um, the, the social distancing is good for some businesses are, are going to help at, at all. It's going to make no difference whatsoever. And in some cases, um, unfortunately, the business is probably going to have to stay shut because they won't just won't be able to um, sustain the, the cost going forward. What I've been, what I've sp said to a lot of people is that the loans that they're getting from the government now, whether it be the bounce back loan or uh, C bills or whatever the case may be, perhaps they should be thinking about using some of that money towards 
um, maybe diversifying or look, maybe even looking at a, a different business or changing the bit current business that, that they've got into something else. Um, it's like some, like everything else, some things you can you can throw as much money as you want at it. It's not, never going to work. It's never going to change the, 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 the basis or, or if it's going to fail, it's going to fail. Yeah, it doesn't matter how, how much money you chuck at it. I'll, the only example I can relate it to, if you've got a, a cut in your arm and it needs stitches, it doesn't matter how many plasters you put on it, you, eventually you have to get stitches or you know you have to go to the hospital and you know you just can't put pla keep on putting plasters on it and sometimes when you're throwing money at, at certain businesses um, especially in certain industries with the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we've got at the moment it's just not going to work I um, hate to say that and this is the reason that we're getting contacted by, uh, by a lot of our existing property clients or investment clients and they're saying as any of your uh, pub landlords come back and want to sell the property. Now, I, I don't I sound um, ruthless about it, but I, I turn around and say, well, some of them have, some of them not. But the, the reason they're asking is that a lot of these establishments won't survive, and the only alternative they have got is to change the business, and the, the obvious uh, business is a, a residential a property, housing, housing. Now, and one thing that we've learned from this pandemic from COVID-19, there's three essential things that you need. Food, water, and a place to stay. Um, housing. Doesn't matter how many commercial properties you've got, doesn't matter how many businesses you've got, at the end of the day, it makes no, we're sitting at home anyway, it makes no difference. The last three months we've been sitting at home. Doesn't matter how big a, a business you've got, a factory, a hotel, you still need somewhere to stay. Doesn't matter how much food you've hoarded. These, these guys, I, I still don't understand about the toilet paper, but uh, it doesn't matter how much toilet paper you go out and buy and food that you go out and buy and water etc you can't walk around with it you can't push it around in a trolley you have to live somewhere so this is why housing uh, food water is the most essential thing so I've been saying a lot of the pub guys that we deal with they've turned around and said right well I'm just calling it a day the money that we've got is a loan I'm going to use that money to get planning permission and change my pub into a, a residential property a flat and probably to sell it um, because they just don't want the hassle of being a landlord but that's my take on it and I'm, I'm, my take on it is always from the finance side because we get the inquiries is always based on the financing and um, like I said we, we've financed lots of hotels and pubs and restaurants and golf courses in the past nightclubs so we see it from that point of view and also we can see it from the point of view that a lot of the clients that we deal on the investment side they come to us and they, and they buy these sort of establishments these sort of premises Sometimes they, 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 they fail for whatever reason. Uh, I think restaurants and pubs have got the biggest failure rate in the UK anyway, um, just in general. So it's, it's, it's not any fault of the landlord. It's just that the, the business is not there. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Um, I'm going to come back to you tomorrow with, with more stuff. That, and like I said, that was the main thing, the news. But what they never took into account is the factor of uh, drink. Because as soon as the drinking's in, um, the social distancing ain't going to work at all. It doesn't matter if it's one metre, two metres, or no metres at all. It's just not going to work, especially if this um, disease is a tran a, a transfer from person to person so easily. Um, I'll see you soon. Click subscribe if you like the channel, and I'll come back to you with some more information. And Stay safe, and uh, good luck.